Welcome to The Good Work, a podcast and video series that follows The Event Company, an event design company that specializes in corporate, nonprofit, and social events. Our passion lies in creating one-of-a-kind events that share the good work of organizations we are fortunate to collaborate with. Tune in for conversations with leaders of these great groups, our best advice for your next event, and some behind-the-scenes moments. Now, let us show you the good work. In this episode of The Good Work, you'll meet Thomas Christensen, brand architect at Profile by Sanford. We've been so fortunate to collaborate with Profile on their Unite convention. Addie will talk with Thomas about Profile's signature branding, their expanding company, and this year's convention in Chicago. Please welcome to today's vodcast, Thomas Christensen. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to today's vodcast. I have Thomas here with us. Hola. Hola. Thomas Christensen from Profile by Sanford. Oh, howdy. <laughs> howdy. <laughs> we just got done uh, picking all of Hugo, his dog Hugo's hairs off his body. Yes, I think we got So him. he's looking good, looking good. Yeah. This is your first time in the office. Oliver. It is. Yes. I very, I and like you're it. a downtown It's cozy. Yes. It is cozy. Yeah. So Thomas and I just got back from a trip. Well, not just, but we were in Chicago for a little while. We were. It was fun. Yeah. Found some hot like spots that. for this year's upcoming event, which we'll talk Too a little bit about many. Yeah. later. Spots. You lost your cell phone. Well, you didn't lose it. Yeah, you left it in a cab. That's a story we need to talk about. <laughs> we, we will. <laughs> so I want to hear all about how you got started into just general branding because yeah. you and I have known each other for quite a few years. And I every time I see things that you're doing or you're out and about doing things, and anything that you've ever done truly is top notch. Oh, uh-huh. Thank you. But you're good at what you do. <laughs> Thanks. Well, yeah, I mean, in terms of how I got involved in branding, um, my degree is in advertising art direction from okay. Chicago. I mean, I started here at U- USF, um, and then I just wanted... Um, go Cougars, right? Yeah, go Sufuku. Um so I wanted a program that was a, a little bit more um, extensive and in, in its offering specifically, you know, in um, the art direction. And uh, Columbia College Chicago is a um, amazing art school. They have um, really defined majors from like, uh, you know, illustration and video um, to, of course, then advertising art direction. So that's what I got a degree in. Um, and um, then I, I got a job here uh, in Sioux Falls uh, working for an ad agency. And that's actually how I got involved with Profile um, was uh, awesome. why I moved here. And then, um, yeah, I'm, so my work there at the agency world, um, more from a, a creative direction standpoint, but I was integral into building uh, the Profile brand while at the agency. So my role at Profile is like yeah, half marketing and half you know creative direction and yeah. building a brand. What was agency life like? It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Agency is fun. I mean, you're, what's nice about agency world is being able to work on a variety of projects. Right. Um, because you really get to kind of stretch your legs in terms of um, creative direction because, you know, you'll have this client that's this direction and one client that's another direction versus yeah. profile. You know, you're the one. Uh, right. client but what's nice about that as well is you you truly get to build the mm-hmm. brand I mean a lot of times that in agency world you don't get that time with uh, the company right. um, to truly flesh out because brand building um, takes time you know it takes time to if you're coming in um, to an organization to understand the brand what what's in place understand the um, the the customers like mm-hmm. who you're serving it, that takes a while to understand and then um, just how the brand evolves and molds over time mm-hmm. um, so that's what's nice about being embedded you know with profile is because right. you really get to truly mold something um, versus sometimes an agency agency world you don't get as much time with a client and when you talk about branding I've done a couple talks over the years in different groups about what branding is and finding your company brand but also your mm-hmm. personal brand and your identity. To when I always start my talks out with like branding, people think is just a logo. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny? Don't you? Like it's a huge misnomer, obviously. Yeah. But branding encompasses so many different facets. Now, at Profile, you have been there 
for a long time. Yeah, and it's actually be four coming up. Yeah. And, but you've been a part of this huge, incredible yes. ride, right? Yeah. Seeing where you started out with how many franchises were there when you first started? Um, well, when I started, there was only one. Cor- in corporate, right? Yeah. In corporate. In, hand- yeah. Because um, we had most corporate locations and we only had one franchise location. Isn't that and crazy? Then, yeah. Now hundreds. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. So what is branding? What does your role look like day to day as a branding architect? Like, yeah, because you've done a lot just in this time frame, and it's continually evolving because your customer base is not just the internal profile team. You've got mm-hmm. franchises, but then also you've got the customer, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you've got a lot of different yeah. audiences. Yeah. So in terms of what branding looks like, so absolutely, uh, I, I love it that you elaborated on it's more than just a logo because I think that's a lot what a lot yeah. of people look like. But it, it's really the embodiment of of everything that your company represents. So, right. um, you know, it's the way you communicate, it's the way you look, it's even the way your customer service, the way you treat your customers. Um, so it's it's marketing, it's operations, it's your product, um, it, it's the umbrella of everything. Mm-hmm. But I also see it as branding is twofold. It's the heart of a company and and what your idea is and your mission is. And then there's the umbrella part of it that trickles into, like I said, the product operations because all of those um, affect your brand. If you have a bad product, you have a, it's going to damage your brand. If you have um, bad operations, like for instance, you drag people off the plane. Um, (laughs) We won't mention companies, but um, that is a customer service operational um, error and that affects their brand as well. So, um, yeah, and and how, um, I don't want to remember what the original question was. Just how it embodies, I think, in all that you do. Like, what does it look like day to day? Because your customer base is not just your internal franchisees. You support, you know, the employees. Mm -hmm. You support the franchises. You support the customers, like the members, really. Yeah. So there's a lot of facets. Yeah, there's a lot. And um, in terms of, you know, a lot of my work is spent with with franchisees. um, So uh, working with any partners that they may be using for any kind of advertising. Of course, we at headquarters also have our own advertisers that we use and any kind of initiatives that we have. So any Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, advertising partners or even uh, tech companies that we bring on board. Mm -hmm. Um, So I bring them up to speed on our brand. You know, we went through a brand orientation in Chicago uh, for the partners that we're bringing on for the event. Um, And then, yeah, internally, um, a lot of that is more so just educating our uh, current uh, employees, most most more so our managers on on our brand, um, bringing them up to speed. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, rolled out uh, new brand guidelines at a, con- a convention, um, not last year, the year before. Um, and that's when we went through kind of a reskinning of our brand, I would mm-hmm. say, um, in terms of our look and feel and, and how we communicate. So, um, yeah, a lot of different audiences that we have. And then, of course, like you said, the member audience. And yeah. that just comes through the the way that, um, too, we, we do our marketing and yeah. any in-store um collateral and stuff like that. One thing that I think you've done a really good job of, and I want to hear kind of your process on how you did it, but what is that brand standards? Because Mm -hmm. first of all, when we saw that piece that rolled out, I mean, we knew bits and pieces of it from our first time in working together, but that booklet (laughs) is incredible. I mean, it's really well done. And I always hear Brian Ost, who's the uh, director of communication strategy, talk a little bit about how he told you to leave work for two weeks and don't come back until it's done. Is that real? Yeah, he did. Okay. Because I mean, when when I came on the profile, and this happens to a lot, um, you hit the ground running. And there was um, so many projects that needed to get started right away. And I didn't um, necessarily uh, have the time that I needed to fully get out of the office and um, really uh, lay out the direction of a brand. And it, it came at a good timing when Brian said, you need to go and do this because this is just before um, our, our big bang, I guess you could say, when we started exploding and bringing on partners and even our tech partners mm-hmm. with redoing our website and stuff. So it came at a good time um, where, yeah, he kicked me out of the office. I worked from home and um, I think it was about, Two weeks, maybe a week and a half, two weeks. Did you do laundry in that time frame, or of like, course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> peruse take breaks. The, the take peruse like the fridge, seeing if there's anything new that magically <laughs> appears. Inspirational, right? For inspiration. Exactly. Um, and it was great because um, it, it truly allowed me to. Um, w- what I loved about doing that, it was um, able to. Um, set the tone of where we are and where we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's what was really exciting about it was really setting that direction Mm -hmm. of where we're going and, and pushing that envelope. 
But it's also a guide that everyone can follow, right? Mm -hmm. Because like you said, you know, when you get in, you kind of are ground running, just trying to get things going. And you've got all these different projects that are due. But you've got this now book that helps mm -hmm. to guide every principle and decision that's made, mm -hmm. just so it's consistent. Yeah, because basically at the time, the brand in terms of, you know, what the brand book is, it was in my head, you know, and um, I, I can only be, you know, so many places at yeah. once. So being able to have that and, and say, here you go, here's, here's our guidelines, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and run. So I do that quick presentation to try to elaborate on yeah. some things, particularly um, if uh, whatever the project is with the uh, client or um, the partner, I'll elaborate um, on certain things that may not be in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, they can just get going. How did the oranges come to be? Yeah. So we already had orange a part of our brand yeah. um, prior to me even starting. But we had quite a, I would say, a large color palette. Okay. And I, I wouldn't say our, our brand was very... Um, polished and focused. Um, so that's what I work to do. I like and brands you the blue, that, right? The blue pieces. Yeah, there was blue and there was brown. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So we removed those colors. Yeah. Um, of course, they're still in our, our logo for our logo mark. But yeah. um, we um, moved away from that direction. Um, I I pushed to move away from that direction because what I really like is is brands that are really tight mm -hmm. um, in terms of yeah. uh, their palette. Um, so like even Apple or even Target, I mean, it's, it's red and white, you yeah. know? Um, cool. yeah. yeah. So, um, I really wanted a strong, um, narrow defined, um, look and feel. So that's where, um, I wanted orange to dominate because, and two, there's the energy of yeah. orange, you know, right. if we were to pick blue, you know, I think blue works great, you know, with Sanford and, and a softer side yeah. of, it's of more healthcare. subtle and yeah. trusting. So, um, Went with blue and then, um, of course, expanded on mm -hmm. uh, different elements and just our look and feel with our uh, photography, getting out of the studio, getting capturing real members in lifestyle mm -hmm. settings. Because, um, I mean, that's our, our members are what's, again, driving our brand. They're, yeah. They they inspired our Done With Diets message by just the, the way that their lives have been changed. Um, so, yeah, it's been been exciting do you feel like sometimes you're like the brand police how you oh, see yeah. different oh, yeah so actually on the brand book you, but you're so liked like i don't know anybody <laughs> be hating on Thomas oh, i'm sure i'm sure some stores probably hate you know, me but <laughs> and i don't mean to talk about logos but even people i see like will stretch our logo and oh, that's yeah. more logo wise or they'll use it with weird colors that just don't look good you know yeah. and yeah, I get really protective of it as well. But. Yeah, I try to see, and that's where I, of of course, like graphics are a big part of that. But yeah. I try to be a little bit more picky when it comes to language, um, with yeah. um, with some of the pieces that come across for approval. Um, yeah. Because you've got like a fun style with it, right? That's but it's relatable, and it's not so. I don't know how to describe it. It's not so structured. Yeah. I don't know if, that, if that's the right way to put it. I don't we're, know how We're to... trying to add a bit more, I mean, a flare? bit more humor, a flare. bit more, yeah, I don't know. flair to it, um, especially as we're um, going across the country. You yeah. know, the Midwest kind of approach to our advertising um, will seem a little dry and boring coastally. And not, mm -hmm. I'm not saying to our branding, but just, yeah. you know, uh, marketing in general in the Midwest. So being able to appeal to, you know, people on the coast, we, we need to inject a little bit more edge um, into our branding. So the brand book that's been in place for a couple of years now, would you say a full year? It's been a couple, couple of years. years. Yeah. Do you see it evolving and changing? I mean, yeah. as you I already have like a uh, revision 17, right? I, I, in my, <laughs> in my brand book. So technically we're still on, um, version 1.0 of my brand book. Wow. Um, but so the one that we just went through, yeah, that's really yeah. awesome. It was, it, was a, it was a good uh, uh, groundwork. And then I've got so many sticky notes, um, yeah. in it of not things that are like, to, to change because the direction and, and groundwork's there, but it's just elaborating. Um, and and as, as we're expanding, you know, putting a little bit more examples in there of things that we've done yeah. um, with uh, the brand book now being in place for this long. So um, showcasing a little bit more of how they can utilize that in different avenues, whether, you know, it be radio, TV, mm -hmm. um, even just vinyl, like, uh, like, 
window takeovers yeah. for before stores opening, um, just to really make that statement, you know, that profiles here. Especially that's the first piece that people see, right? Mm-hmm. So it needs to be cohesive throughout. Yeah. We were in um, the Black Hills over the weekend and we were over um, near one of the coffee shops and Callie, the first thing she says like, oh, look, there's a profile store, but it's recognizable, right? Because it's yeah. all that consistent branding, the consistent look. What happens when people, and you don't, I, you can be honest or you don't have to say <laughs> names at all, but what happens when people go off the rails? Like, yeah. So, I mean, you... that's where we try to bring them back. <laughs> um, sometimes you don't know that, like, you don't know of yeah. some things until after it's already right. out. Uh, but that's why, so the way the standards are, I don't give them the keys to the brand. And that's like, you know, the the keys to the elements that we have, um, the high-res photography. So I've got a, a, a library of all of our brand assets. They don't get those keys until they've gone through an orientation. So mm, good. Um, whenever someone's asking for those keys, then that's where I'm like, all right, well, let's have a conversation on what you're trying to do. So that is is a way for us to accomplish um, things going rogue. Um, so it's like, of course, we want things on brand. Um, and, you know, if you want to create things, then, you know, let's figure out what you want to create. So it's a way of um, kind of policing it in a way. Um, but yeah, but when things things get made, um, and you know, as we grow, uh, we'll probably get a brand compliance department, yeah. and um, so no sa- sure Sarah that Palin's are out there. So what? So we have no Sarah Palin's exactly. out there. Going yeah, all wrong. <laughs> going wrong. Um, so yeah, That's we'll awesome. we'll look at those, and then um, I know a lot of times, um, you know, those those are the brand police yeah. just to ensure that yeah we're following on brand. Who's your main partners at headquarters that you work with to develop those things? Um, yeah, we work with, um, you know, we have a, an ad agency yeah. um, in town that works a lot um, with uh, developing various pieces. We do a lot of things in house. Yeah, you too. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've got we've we've we're building our own uh, marketing department within it. Um, so designers, copywriters, super admirable. Yeah, um, which is exciting. You know, being able to to um, you know have that engine yeah. inside of our um, de- um inside a profile but then yeah we have um uh, digital partners um yeah. for our website um we've got um app partners so we're working on um the latest and greatest with um our new app um yeah a lot of good a lot stuff. of partners yeah when you talk about partners i want to talk a little bit about the the expansion of profile because it is happening so quickly and you have the national eye on you, actually globally. I mean, there's a lot of people that are watching the development of Sanford, our profile by Sanford. What does that look like from your standpoint? I mean, is it has to be a little scary or no? Um, I mean, it's exciting, it, right? But it, there's it, got to be. It is, but we have a good foundation. I mean, yeah. you know, the, the growth is exciting and it's also scary um, in terms of, I think, sanity <laughs> <laughs> making sure you can, can can keep up right yeah. like there's so much going on yeah um so i think you know it's being able to have focus being able yeah. to understand priorities and being able to reprioritize right. um but we have we have a good foundation of yeah. our brand we have a good found we have great coaches great staff so i mean a, a, and a great a program, you know, profile yeah. works. So as long as, um, you know, we uh, get our new coaches uh, and they understand uh, profile and how it works, um, yeah, we'll be good. What's your favorite part of the mission at Profile? It, it's it's the members, you know. Yeah. I, I love it when you, you – we have a, uh, a private member group, mm-hmm. and it's so amazing just on reading. Facebook. Yeah, on yeah. Facebook, reading these individual stories and – no matter, like, if you were to ask a member, you know, to describe profile on, you know, um, impact on their life, uh, the the thread, like, 8 out of 10 will use in the words one ways or another that we've changed their life. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what's just really amazing about profile is being able to um, – change lives. And that, that's, that's our, our mission is changing lives one relationship at a time. So um, that's, that's cool. I mean, people who, you know, can do things that they've never been able to do before, right. um, spending more times with their kids. We've had a member who was on seven medications for diabetes. He was on profile for, I think it was two or three months, and the doctor cleared him of all medications wow, that's that he incredible. was taking. So and I, it's not just a diet, stuff. right? That's the whole thing of, that I love yeah. about the Sanford approach with profile is that you're using the science that's deeply rooted right within the health system, but yeah. then you're making it accessible to everybody. Yeah. But it's a lifestyle change. And I know those are like clear 
cliche words or whatever. Yeah. But it's one day at a time yep. and you're making it adaptable to them because yep. everybody's body is so different and there's so many cool things happening on the genetic side yes. with profile and all these really awesome yeah. advancements and, and over that's the years. What- the lifestyle is really what makes profile like different because I like to say, you know, that weight loss isn't rocket surgery. I mean, you know, it is diet and exercise. The problem with it is that our lives are crazy yeah. and we don't know how to it to make um, lasting behavior changes. Right. And that's really like what our coaches do. Our coaches just don't sit here and say, eat this, don't eat right. that. Right, right. I mean, we work with you to try to understand your triggers, to understand, you know, uh, what kind of... Uh, diets that they've done in the past and why they haven't worked. So they haven't worked because they haven't instilled lasting behavior Mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. And and, and what we do is really educate them on, um, you know, label reading and portion control and any other triggers that they might have Mm -hmm. from stress Mm -hmm. um, that they could revert back uh, to old habits. So that's that's really what, what we do. And the coaches truly care. That's the awesome part about it. It's not just some walk-in where you walk in, weigh in, and you're out, right? Yeah, coaches are, you know, they're incredible because, again, it's they're not just dietitians or whatever. I mean, they are a huge support. Um, They they listen in on members and hear, you know, intimate store like details of that person's life um, with their struggles. and try to have them overcome this from, of course, you know, our, a weight loss perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, coaches, um, they, they are with a member side by side to help them on their journey. So one of the cool pieces um, that we have coming up here in a couple of months, it, well, a couple of months, that's crazy. We oh, should yeah. do a countdown. Yeah. Is our Unite Convention. So yeah. last year we came on board just a few months before we launched it. We hosted it at the Pentagon in Sioux Falls. And it was crazy fast yeah it was awesome though to see a gym transformed into a whole different space which was pretty awesome yeah tell me about your thoughts about going into chicago this year i'm super excited to get yeah. everyone to chicago i think it's just going to have a, a different kind of energy to it yeah. being in in chicago um of course you know there was great energy being uh, having it in the pentagon having yeah. it in a sports arena um i think chicago is just going to have another feel i think it really contributes to the the growth right. um, in our expansion by by holding it there um yeah and it's going to be a lot of fun what elements did you like from last year that you think you'll see repeated this year um, definitely the kickoff. Yeah. <laughs> I think people. I don't know draws. if we'll do confetti, but yeah, we'll yeah. see. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll do maybe like fire. Maybe we could, or, oh, yeah, like, sure. <laughs> fire, fire instead of confetti. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll have those little poppers, right? That you get. Oh, at, everyone, like, everyone like, gets a popper. <laughs> so it's contained right in their little area. Yeah, we did confetti cannons last year yeah. with our friends from Pinnacle. It was crazy. We, dance troupe. Dance troupe. Yeah, um, Fresh Produce had a really cool video. Yeah. Flashing lights, tigers, smoke, tigers, <laughs> just everything. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. The cleanup fee in Chicago could be astronomical with yeah. a gajillion confetti flakes all over, but eh, we'll see. We'll just have like everybody like pick up, you know, a handful of flakes. <laughs> That'll be their activity. So instead of you taking them on a <laughs> run, on a run the next morning, everybody will be tasked with picking up confetti. <laughs> the fun part that I noticed last year, and you know, when we get to be a part of events, it's not just a one and done for us. I mean, we get to, we're having conversations with them. Um, we're getting to know members and mm-hmm. the people from Kentucky, all these people, you know, you just get to know them really well. Yeah. One of my favorite parts is looking around in the room, even during breaks or even off, um, offline was they were sitting at those couches that lo- oh, those yeah. lounge areas having really awesome conversations and they're helping each other, right? Yeah. Like it's not about the success of my market in Omaha or the success of my market in Ohio or wherever. Yeah. Like they all truly want to help each other grow. Yeah. And that's the impactful part that we saw from being kind of the outsiders, you know, being able to kind of see that growth, but yeah. people truly care about each other. Yeah. And that's, what's great. I mean, that's the conventions unite, you know, that's, yeah. that's the ex- exact idea is bringing yeah. everybody together um, and around around our mission around our yeah mission, so. and you've got managers and coaches and franchisees and all yeah. these different individuals yep. that are part of it but yeah. yeah there's a lot of cool things and i know they really love to the the innovation showcase is exciting yeah. because you get a you know sample some things yeah. that are coming out new technology that's coming mm-hmm. so um yeah th- they all love to see what what's the road and be now. the first to kind of know yeah. what's happening yeah is there um, anything that you wish that you would have done differently over these last four years in terms of the branding pieces of it that you can think of? I don't think so. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's practically perfect. We have Mary no. Poppins. <laughs> practically perfect in every well, way. I think because I wouldn't say it necessarily do anything different I, because um, I, while You're just our moving brand, so fast, while our, right? Our brand evolves. It evolves at the rate at what's appropriate. Yeah. So just because maybe in two years we might incorporate something a little differently into our brand mm-hmm. doesn't mean we're ready for it now. Yeah. You know, so like... I think we're 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 doing well. Um, um, I, I think you know what one one downfall sometimes I, I would say is maybe just having a, a bit more um, readily available um, put together resources after we release the brand book because it takes a while to sure. to build up um, you know new uh, pieces all the assets that for, you need yeah, yeah. so um, I think um, I guess maybe having a little bit more manpower behind um, getting some of those resources built up um, but I've obviously you know uh, throughout that growth process you know we've been developing yeah. those resources we just didn't have you know them packaged out of the gate when we released the brand book because that takes some time honestly but. though that's like how a lot of entrepreneurs are i mean you think of it it's like it's small it's its own entity right its own mm-hmm. business i mean that's how it is with a lot of different groups you know and yeah. just making sure that everyone's cohesive in that look and you're talking the same language and it's the same look you know that you're looking when you see it out on the streets or whatever but that happens with a lot of groups yeah. to be honest with you so yeah kudos to you Anything big coming in the branding side of things? You're not going to change um, like probably, colors, I, are you? Um, I think we're going to go to purple. No, I'm Ooh. kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, nothing <laughs> big. be a like, vivid statement. Well, what, what's new is, um, I mean, we have, um, you know, we're constantly innovating. So yeah. we've got a lot of initiatives. I don't want to release okay. anything That's yet. Okay. Um, but, uh, we have, um, an expansion to one of our protocols, um, that'll be very awesome. exciting. Um, there'll be, uh, some, uh, products associated with that. Yeah. Um, as well as, oh, I don't want to get too No, much. don't, 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 um, don't. It's okay. And then, um, there's also a, a big, um, tech, um, yeah, release component. that we're, we're going to be having too. That's awesome. Um, that I think members are really going to love. So. Now's a good time to get involved, right? Yeah. Aren't you glad that Brian Oss told you to go to your house for I did. Two, two weeks? I did. <laughs> now I, look at again, you. it was, and I, I thanked him for that. It was, again, it was good timing too. It was again right on that that cusp when yeah. it started to explode. So it was good to have that piece um, completed uh, before that happened. Good for you. Yeah. Well, I am excited for Chicago. It'll be fun. There's a lot to coming up here these next couple of months. We have a lot yeah. of work to do, actually. We do. <laughs> next couple of months. We do. Maybe Brian can send us both home for a couple of weeks. <laughs> couple of weeks. We'll <laughs> see what happens. Right, right. Well, before I let you go, um, we do this little thing where we like to ask you these top 10 questions. Okay. It's like rapid fire. Okay. Right? So they can be, I don't want you to think too hard on them because that's what okay. makes this more fun. Okay. Ready? Okay. Let's do it. If you were not involved in the career that you would have right now, what would you be doing? House flipping. Oh, yeah. You'd be good at that. Yeah. I, enjoy I always that. love watching you on Instagram and you can see like the transformation of different spaces or yeah. I love rugs, remodeling like my new house. rugs and all that stuff that you do. Yeah. Your house but. has been featured in 605 Magazine, right? Yeah, it was. And that was before I've done a lot of changes now. That was yeah. before like kitchen remodel. And so I would actually like want them to like a lot of Snyder. I know you're listening. So <laughs> our friend Thomas here would like for you to do. Not even a before, but a before, middle, and end. We Could go. we do like? Yeah. Are you you think yeah. you're at the end piece? But... Um, there's still a few more I want to do. I want to redo my bar downstairs. Okay. Um, I've got some cool ideas for that. Alana, feature his house. Let's do. <laughs> we'll give her a little. We'll, we'll tag her. Back. We'll tag her in that. So, if you could be any animal, what would it be? An eagle. Why? I want to fly. Oh. <laughs> But that's you sound disappointed. No, Why? no, I think it's awesome. Go no, be I want to. I mean, spread your wings. I've been traveling um, a yeah. little bit more lately, so I, I think I just saw a video. It was um, just came through my feed, but it was just um, they put like a GoPro or whatever on an eagle, oh. um, and it was just amazing to that's cool. see that view. So I think that'd be just thrilling to have you ever went skydiving not yet but we were just talking about that today at work were you? so um that i want to go Oof. but Le- the laverne has it yeah, yeah yeah but they they go from like ten thousand feet and i want to go higher I, I was joking the coworkers like i want to be where you know i i'm close to wearing an oxygen mask like that's how high up that i want to go whoa when, when i jump 
Then I was like, I maybe you could fun. start small though. Like do no. the indoor skydiving. <laughs> nope. It's like, no. Nope. Start the indoor skydiving and then work your way indoor up. Indoor skydiving. Yeah, have you ever seen that? Oh, is that just with the air? Yeah. Oh, that's not. It's called indoor skydiving. That's I'm not sure, skydiving. Like, like, well, it's like a practice. I mean, no, just go for it. Let's just do it, Addie. Gosh. No, I'm out on that deal. I don't <laughs> mind heights, but that is a little too much for me. Off limits. Whew. Favorite flavor of ice cream? What's your favorite flavor? I like, um, oh, what is it? Butter pecan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm old. You're not old. I I've, I've, I've said that once to like coworkers, and they're like, old people like butter pecan. <laughs> That's okay. Some people like don't like, pecan. I don't like nuts in my oh, okay. ice cream. Too good. crunchy. Like What's it. one thing on your bucket bucket list? Not the skydiving. You can't say that. So I've never been to Europe yet. I need to do oh, that. Oh, yeah. That would be good. I need to do that. I would like to go to Morocco. That'd be nice. Thailand, yeah. Morocco. Yeah. Like everywhere. There's a lot of places. What is one hobby you would begin if you could? Underwater basket weaving. Okay, shush. That's not even a real thing, is that? <laughs> we'll make it a thing. I don't know if it is. Underwater basket weaving? Yeah. Yikes. No one hobby. I mean, like, there's <laughs> hobbies that I have now that I guess I would like to. You're spend so more good time at like with. the cakes and all that. Oh, that stuff. was fun. But I'm not going to get into cake decorating. Yeah. I'll leave that to Sarah. Are the professionals. Yes. What does your dream day look like? Um, I would love to work like remote and um, be be in a place where I could enjoy the outdoors a little bit more than mm -hmm. here. <laughs> I the mean, elements. it's like, it's like eight months of winter here. <laughs> um, but no, I think like, you know, getting up, you know, getting, um, you know, getting some good work done. But then um, at the, at the evening, I think that was a question on one of our, four, no, that was like an ultimate, it was like the ultimate, ultimate day. day. Yeah. So we, you and I both put similar answers. Like we would go hiking, yeah, we would yeah. go kayaking. So go uh, outside of work, if I were to pick that, so it'd be go to brunch. Yeah. And then do some kind of like hiking activity, go outdoors, go kayaking. And then, um, you know, we'd have lunch on a patio somewhere, drinking, um, you know, um, not a, not a mosa, a mojito. Mojito. Mojito somewhere on a patio. Um, do like some street tacos, some fish tacos. This sounds and like then, the perfect date. Right? Are you asking then, me out? Do you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> sounds awesome. And then, um, what else I say? Um, Music, like concert? Oh, yeah, going to, like, a, a music venue, yeah. then grabbing, like, a couple cocktails. So, like, going to the Carpenter Bar, get some good cocktails. Just a chill day. And then go go home and cuddle. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, I forgot you put cuddling on Yeah, well, cuddling is great. Um, what is your favorite book that you've read recently? Um, well, one I'm really enjoying, and, I, and so I, I'm not done with it yet, but it's um, The Song of Achilles. It's oh. the... Um, romance between um, Achilles and Patroclus. Interesting. Yes. It's very How'd good. you find that out? Um, a friend you... uh, gave me Interesting. the book. Yeah. She, she read it and she said it was really good so she bought it for me. So would you rather speak every language in the world or talk to animals? It's a tough question. Speak every language in the world. Well, if that, well, wouldn't that be, would, would dog language, oh my gosh, animal language be? Don't analyze this too much. Can I Thomas. combine them? <laughs> sure. That's my thing. Uh, I always like hybrid. So like different concepts of, <laughs> of creative. I'm like, can we hybrid these? Um, so I, I would probably say language. Okay. You know, animals are great, but. What's your favorite emoji? Um, the poop emoji. No. <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> That's kidding. so funny. <laughs> um, I like the hands one. The laughy, like, smiley hands. Where on. I think it's, like, blushing. Yeah. And then the two little hands. <laughs> just, like. The, the close-up dinosaur hands. Yeah. That's, a That's when one. he answers his text messages, ladies and gentlemen, because we were in a group text message mm, a week ago, two weeks ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. And we had a call, like, following weeks. I'm like, Thomas, I'm like. Like, we even put in that text message. It was Mariah, Callie, myself, and you. I'm like, are you alive? <laughs> no response. <laughs> I am the world's worst oh. texter, just so anyone knows. Anyway. Last question. At which store would you choose to max out your credit card? Uh, we, I think we'd ask this, too. Um, I'd have to pick, like, a Target. Yeah, there's it's a lot got there. Everything. It's got good everything. decor. If I wanted some clothes. Snacks. Snacks. It's got, it's got Produce. Yeah. They've got furniture. Yeah. Got some furniture. Probably there. Because, like, 
if I pick one like clothing store, well, then I'm missing out right. on everything else. That's a good question. I'm gonna have to good go to Target, Target boutique. Target. Well, thank you for having. Thank you. Oh, I was about to say thank you for having me today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you You're for welcome. having me in my own office. Thanks for, thanks for coming yeah. to your show. <laughs> I'm excited for Chicago. More yeah. details behind the scenes soon. Thanks, Thomas. More to come. All right. Thank you for listening to today's episode of The Good Work. And a special thank you to my friend Thomas for joining us and sharing more about Profile by Sanford. Tune in next week as we answer more of your questions in our second round of Just Ask Us. Don't forget to subscribe to The Good Work on YouTube and iTunes and follow the event company on social media to stay up to date on the good work that we are part of each day.